I need help. Please show me anything that records sound inside your trench coat. Holy shit! Has this ever happened to you? Probably not. But microphones can be a confusing topic. But we're here to help. I'm Kevin, and before we get into all the fun stuff we get to do with sound, I want to take a moment to talk about the thing that's actually capturing your sound. Your microphone. Don't worry, this will be fun. Oh hey, you're still here. Well, we can't tell you which microphone to buy because we don't know what your production needs, but we can help you learn how to figure that out for yourself. Knowing a little bit about what microphones actually are and how they work is really useful knowledge for every filmmaker. So, we know what microphones do, but what is a microphone? To answer that question, let's start with a fundamental truth. What we perceive as sound isn't real. What you and I experience and hear as sound is actually just waves of pressure and displacement traveling through the air. So a microphone is simply a device that senses those waves and converts them into an electrical signal, which we can then record. However, the electrical signal the microphone creates is very, very quiet, too quiet for recording. We call this signal mic level. For recording purposes, we send this mic level signal through what's called a mic preamp, or pre for short. The preamp's job is to amplify the signal to line level, which is a bigger, more robust signal that's fit to record. Most recorders and other audio interfaces have preamps built right in, so you usually don't need to worry about buying one. We'll also get more in-depth about preamps in a recording technique lesson later in this series. One last thing. Almost all good microphones, with a few exceptions, use XLR cables. They look like this. Hey there! I'm Mr. XLR Cable, and I'm here to... Yeah, uh, we're not gonna do that. One of the most important ways we categorize microphones is by transducer type. A transducer is simply a device that converts one kind of energy into another. As we discussed, microphones convert sound waves into electrical signals, so all microphones are transducers, but many actually function in completely different ways. The method by which a microphone turns sound waves into an electrical signal affects how the mic functions and how it sounds. We're gonna go over three of the most common transducer types, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon. Dynamic. While every piece of equipment does have its limits, dynamic microphones are very sturdy. When you need to mic drop, be sure to drop dynamic. Good quality dynamic mics are also usually very affordable. This SM58 costs $99 new. Dynamic mics can also handle high levels of sound, making them an ideal choice for rock concerts or recording other loud sounds close up. <laughs> However, this durability comes at a cost. While dynamic mics handle big, loud stuff well, they're not always very good at recording quiet, more subtle sounds. They're also typically the least accurate at capturing sounds the way our ears hear them. This doesn't necessarily mean dynamic mics sound bad, but they can impart a noticeable feel or character to your sound, so it's worth being aware of this. Condenser. Condenser mics produce a louder or hotter signal than dynamic mics, giving them a greater clarity and detail when recording quiet to moderate level sounds. They also tend to reproduce sound more accurately to how we hear it, making condensers a good choice for recording speech. The big important thing to point out about condenser microphones is that they require something called phantom power. Show me the power! Show me the power! While this might not be as awesome as it sounds, it does affect how you use the microphone. Condenser mics rely on having some voltage across the transducer in order to work, and that voltage has to travel up the only cable that's plugged into the mic. You guessed it, your XLR cable. Brother! So that's why it's called phantom power. It doesn't have its own power cable. When you're using condenser microphones, you'll need to turn on phantom power on your preamp or recording device. This function will either be labeled as phantom or plus 48V. This stands for 48 volts, which is the standard voltage used for phantom power. It doesn't matter which way it's labeled, it'll do the exact same thing. Power your condenser microphone. Ribbon. While ribbon mics aren't used on film sets, they are commonplace in recording studios and on talk show host desks. Technically, ribbon mics are just dynamic mics with a tiny, super ultra, crazy thin metal ribbon inside, instead of the usual plastic diaphragm. We want to mention them for two key reasons. First, a lot of ribbon mics look totally awesome. Are these Art Deco UFOs or microphones? 
I'm honestly still not completely sure. The second reason is that ribbon mics, primarily older, vintage ones, can get completely destroyed if you use phantom power. Treat it like a valuable, fragile antique that might possibly die if phantoms get to it. Also, don't strap it to a boom pole. They're not meant for that. Okay, let's talk about polar patterns. Another area in which microphones differ from one another is their polar pattern, or pickup pattern, which is how well a microphone picks up sound from different directions. Microphone instruction manuals will typically come with all sorts of detailed, specific information, including charts that look like these. These confusing looking charts represent a top-down, two-dimensional view approximating how sensitive a microphone is at capturing sounds from different directions. I find this is a lot easier to understand in practice than in theory. So let's make Joey stand outside in the parking lot all day with no sunglasses or beverages. Get uh, Welcome. Let's start with the simplest type of polar pattern, omnidirectional. As the name suggests, an omnidirectional or omni microphone picks up sound from all directions equally. This makes omnidirectional mics easy to place. They can go almost anywhere as long as they're close to what you want to record. For this reason, lavalier mics are always omnis. So what does that sound like? I'm walking in a circle around this microphone. If we look at the polar pattern for an omni mic, we can see that it's a perfect circle. Now, if we look at the polar pattern for that SM58, we'll see something completely different. Cardioids. Whoa! Cardioids get their name from that vaguely heart-shaped polar pattern. I also think it kinda looks like a butt. A cardioid mic is sensitive to sounds coming from the front, but much less sensitive from the back. Mic check! Ha ha ha! That'd be the right shack of what? Mic check! Ha ha ha! Let's say we didn't want to hear Joey making these fun sounds. As we spin the microphone away from Joey, we hear less and less of him. But now we're pointed directly at the street. So we may have another problem if we don't want to record that either. This may seem obvious, you f***ing smartass. This may seem <laughs> This may seem obvious, but it's a direct result of the polar pattern. While this may sound inconvenient at first, this is precisely why the SM58 is a great mic for things like concerts. It'll primarily pick up the singer holding the mic instead of the crowd or, say, the loudspeakers. Shut up! There are several other kinds of cardioid microphone. Subcardioid, hypercardioid, and supercardioid. I'm not actually making that up. While you can see there's some difference between these polar patterns, they're all similar in that they're mostly sensitive to sounds coming from the front and less sensitive to sounds from other directions. We call these directional microphones. In other words, there's usually a right direction and a wrong direction to point the microphone in, depending on what you want to record. Shotgun microphones are also in the cardioid family. The Rode NTG3 shotgun microphone that we use in our videos uses a supercardioid transducer, which by itself has a polar pattern like this. However, the supercardioid transducer is housed inside this thing with all these tiny slots in it, which is called an interference tube. This tube uses acoustic tricks to cut out a lot of the sound coming from the sides. This makes the microphone even more directional, giving us the unique shotgun polar pattern. Whoa, it's a parking lot. I'm walking down this parking lot. It's a real fun day in the parking lot. <laughs> this is why it's so important to have a boom operator. A shotgun mic is pretty useless unless it's being pointed directly at what you're trying to record. The problem you have is things will start falling off the mic, which means they're gonna get really muddy and then you're not even gonna be able to hear them anymore. I hope you enjoyed this quick glance at some of the microphone basics and have a better idea about what kinds of microphones are out there and how they work. We'll be going more in depth on recording technique in a later video. If you have any questions or cool microphone tricks of your own, let us know. Go on our forums at discuss.rockjump.com. And thanks for watching.